Thanks, Elaine. The fingers work pretty good yet, I think so. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at the Reformed Church of Stout on a, a breezy morning again. So, uh, it's good to have you here. i got just a few announcements. The flowers here are um, from the Smites family. They brought them this morning. Thank you for that. And again, we do extend our sympathies to you and, and all your family in the loss of Al. Um, just a few things for this week. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock is choir practice, so um, come on out and join us as we will prepare for next Sunday. Um, also, on Thursday night we have prayer group, and I see it's Cheryl's birthday, so 47, I assume, something in there, right? Yeah, okay. All right, um, also, um, next Sunday will be the last Sunday for our catechism and um, kids' Sunday school time. Um, Stephanie says no more boxes, so um, don't bring any more cardboard boxes. She has more than enough. Um, and also, we uh, were planning on getting together uh, the high school kids for a game night, um, but we're not going to be able to do that. Quite a few of the kids can't make it, so we're going to wait until um, there's a time that more of us can get together. Also, yesterday was a great success. Thank you to Norma and everyone who helped out for that. Um, I did hear that there was a um, footwear malfunction. They, they said there were a lot of issues. <laughs> Smile, Larry. He's, well, I know. Okay, yeah, well, that's all right. Come on in when you're ready. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, let's uh, stand this morning. Let's greet each other and then uh, remain standing, and we'll have our call to worship, our opening prayer, and our hymn.
Our call to worship this morning comes from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Let's pray. Father, you indeed watch over us. You take care of us. You are faithful to us. And Lord, because of that, we come this morning before you to worship you and to praise your holy name. Lord, may everything that we do here this morning be to your name's honor and glory. We pray it in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. Our opening hymn of praise, number 44, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Trey's going to come. Oh, there it is. Looks like you're the only one, buddy. All right. Do you own a sleeping bag? Or do you? Oh, here comes Bailey. Hi, sweetie. You have a sleeping bag? Well, <laughs> that is kind of what I wanted to use for the illustration today, but I forgot to ask when if we had one until about quarter to nine. 
And she said, no, we got rid of that a long time ago. <laughs> so I brought a big pillow, okay? When you went to kindergarten, did you take a nap? Did you have a mat that you had to lay on on the floor? Do you remember? No? A towel. <laughs> wow, things were tough. All right. <laughs> All right, but if you can imagine this is a mat, okay, let's say it's a little bit bigger so you could lay on it, okay? There's a story in the Bible of a, a man that was 38 years old, and for his entire life he laid on a mat. He could not move, he could not walk, he couldn't help himself, he couldn't do anything. And then one day Jesus came along and said to that man, stand up, pick up your mat, go home, you're healed. Okay? Should have been a happy occasion, right? The man's healed and everything's good, but the preachers of that day, we'll call them preachers so you can understand, all right? They were mad because that man was carrying his mat and it was Sunday. And they said that you couldn't carry your mat on Sunday. You were sinning if you did that. That was not very compassionate of those preachers, was it? Mm -mm. And Jesus went on, and we'll talk to the adults a little bit more, okay? But just remember, compassion is okay any day of the week, okay? Always show compassion. There's, there's no time that we should not be able to do that, all right? So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we just thank you that you love us, that you care for us, and that you've shown us how we are to live, that we are to love everyone, that we are to be compassionate to those that need help, and Lord, we just pray that you will help us to do that, no matter the time, the day, no matter where we are, that we would just be kind, just like you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. You. You're welcome. That one look good? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Reed and Tracy and their family have picked out our special number for this morning.
share a little bit about what she will be doing on her mission trip. And then, Missy, when you are done, if you just stay here, we're going to pray over you, okay? All right, so I just want to explain a little bit about what I'm doing. So I'm going to be leaving on May 10th. And um, we're flying out of Cedar Rapids, and we're going to fly to Atlanta and then to Guatemala. And then we have like a six-hour bus ride when we get there through the mountains. And then we're staying um, at a place that Prairie Lakes has down there. And we're going to work in the clinic that they own. And then also we're going to go to the clinics in the mountains and just assist the doctors with things that they need us to do. So helping the patients or filling medicine or doing anything that they ask us. And then we're also going to help the missionaries that live down there. So we're just going to help them do some things like around that area. And then um, we're also going to be going to the schools there and teaching them about hand hygiene. So about like brushing their teeth and the importance of that. And then about washing their hands and how that can help them um, keep from getting sick. And then um, I also wanted to kind of share like some things that I bought with all the donations. So um, I bought a different a bunch of different medications, so melatonin, some stool softeners, um, what else, blood pressure cuffs, toothbrushes, toothpaste, combs, Germex, I think that's about it. Ask if there's any questions. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> how, long, how long will you be there? Oh, I'm going to be there for 10 days. And how many people are going all together? Um, there's like nine or ten of us. Okay. Um, it's all students from Allen, and then we have one teacher that's going with us. I don't think it is. It's called a chicken bus. <laughs> All right. So let's pray. There you go. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for Missy and the group and Lord that you have put it upon their heart to go. Lord, you are indeed leading them to do your will, to be compassionate and to help others. Lord, we just pray that they will indeed be very successful. Lord, we also pray for their safety as they travel, Lord, also while they're there. Lord, we just pray that your hand of protection would be upon them. We think of Missy's uh, family. I know they're going to have some apprehensions while she's gone, but Lord, we know that you will take care of her, and we just praise you for that. We just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for Missy, and we just pray again that you will bless her in your son's precious and holy name. Thank you. Yeah, I can just keep it here. Mom and Dad, it'll be okay. I know when Nathan and Emily went to Haiti, it's, yeah, it's heart-wrenching. Okay. Okay, so there will be updates via the the internet. So we will keep everybody updated what's going on. So awesome. All right. Our scripture this morning comes from John chapter five, verses one through eighteen. It's found on page sixteen fifty three in your Pew Bible if you'd like to follow along. <clears throat> Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of people, disabled people, used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for such a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? 
Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat, and he walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he even was calling God his own father, making himself equal to God. Amen. There are many Jewish festivals that had to be kept during Jesus' day. Most of these festivals would occur in Jerusalem. There were three specific ones that all the men, all the Jewish men would be required to to attend the Passover, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. But Jesus was not here to celebrate. He had work to do. In a few days, he would choose those 12 disciples that would be with him for the days to come. But he had some extra instruction for them and, and for the people around him, the people that would gather when he would come and talk or heal someone. Jesus performed many miracles, and today's healing of the lame man was no exception. It is a fact of the many signs that John has in his word. This morning I see seven signs of what this story really means, what the, the main gist of it is all about. The first is the location of the pool at Bethesda. It was located by the Sheep Gate. This Sheep Gate was first mentioned in Nehemiah. This Sheep Gate was where the Jews would bring the sheep into the temple for the sacrifice. It was a narrowing of an area where the sheep could not get away. Once they had been brought to this place, their doom was sure. The first sign, of course, is that Jesus was going to be that sheep gate. He was going to be the sheep, the sacrifice. There would be no way out for him. He would have to go through with what his father had instructed him to do. The second sign is the pool itself and its description. This pool would be a, a pool of water that would be calm and serene. And then at various times throughout the day, or maybe not every day, it would become turbulent. The waters would swirl, much as we would say maybe a, a, a whirlpool would happen. At this very moment, when this water began to stir, the first person who could get down to the water and enter it would be healed. Now, you couldn't be in the water before that. You had to wait. And so the, the person that maybe had the least affliction, the, the least issue with getting around with mobility, he was or she was probably the one that would get down into the water. And once they entered that water, they indeed would be healed. The area around this pool was elaborate. It had porches, and it was supported by these colonnades or these huge pillars. These pillars were originally intended for decoration, for they were near the temple. 
But these porches and these pillars had become a shelter from the sweltering heat for those who would come for healing. Many would lean upon those pillars so they would have an advantage of getting down to the water when it would begin to stir. The water itself. The urgency of needing to get to that water when it began to stir. All to be healed. Of course, again, this all points to Jesus. Only Jesus can heal us, not physically, but spiritually. And the urgency of it, because we, not, we do not know how long we have upon this earth. But this pool and, and the temple and everything around has a deeper sign, and it's a very sad one. In verse 3, we read that a great number of people, disabled people, would come there each and every day. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed, waiting for their chance, hoping that they might be healed on that day. It's estimated that up to 100 people would sit there waiting, waiting, waiting. This scene upset the Jewish leaders because we... We had all these people here, and they were not of the crowd, if you will. They were the despised, the rejected, the lowlifes. And this disgusted the Jewish leaders that they would even come and sit near the temple. Not good PR for those that might be coming to church, if you will, on that day. But the story is even more sad, for the man of this story, we read, has been an invalid for 38 years. For 38 years, he would lay there by that pool, and he would wait, and he would wait, and he would wait. And then, as the waters began to stir with as much power as he had, he would try to get himself down into that pool. And each time, of course, he had failed. This had went on so long that Jesus makes a, a strange question. He gives a strange question to this man. He says, do you even want to get better? Are you even trying to get better? And the man says, yes, I want to get better, but I cannot get down there in time, and there's no one to help me. You see, each and every day, the people that were going to the temple to worship would go past these people, and I'm sure they would turn their head and look the other way as they walked by. The sign here is, do we want to be healed by Jesus? Do we want to accept him? Do we want to be saved? Again, I said that there was no one there to help him. And here, to me, it becomes really, really sad. No one in the temple reached out to help that man or the others that were there. Day after day after day, they would walk by them. I'm sure they would shake their head in disgust. There was no compassion. There was no servanthood. There was no love. There was no concern. We don't even read of the man having any family. Did he have a family? We don't know. Were they able to help? If so, they didn't, but probably because they could not help. God doesn't say this directly, but the temple was there for looks only. It was there for for to collect money, let's put it that way, to collect offerings and, and to keep the, the temple looking good. There was nothing there of substance for the people that would enter. And there certainly was nothing in that temple for those who truly needed help. And then Jesus comes along and he says to the man, pick up your mat and walk. And as I shared with the kids, there should have been great rejoicing with, with everyone. Everyone that was at the temple should have said, Wow, 38 years he has laid here, and now look, he can walk. 
but instead they were more concerned about their rules and their regulations. They had made up so many laws, so many laws that really didn't make any sense, laws that had nothing to do with God's kingdom. The fact that this man picked up his mat and was carrying it home was a chance for the Jewish leaders to pounce upon him, to belittle him even more. And when they asked who had healed him, the man answered, I don't know. And he didn't know who Jesus was. And Jesus had slipped away. But later on, the man came back to the temple. And I have to wonder, was he still carrying his mat? It was probably the only possession that he had. Was he still carrying that mat? Or had he left it somewhere in fear of the Jewish leaders? This morning as we come together and worship, do we have a mat? That mat to that man was a sign of restraint, of almost being imprisoned, because it was all that he had, and it was his only place to be. He had no hope. All he had was that mat. Are we carrying that mat even today on Sunday? Are we coming into church this morning bringing that mat with us? Does that mat hinder us from doing what God's will is for us in our life? You see, Jesus told the man, get up and stop sinning. Stop sinning. Our sinful nature restricts us and keeps us from doing what God really wants us to do. Priorities, things of importance, things that need to be done, things that we want to do, things that we do that really have no importance at all. Those Jewish leaders, they were so caught up, weren't they, in, in keeping the law. Keep the law, keep the law, keep the law. If you don't, you're in trouble. You see, they had their mat as well. Their mat restricted them from really seeing the grace of God. Their mat blinded their eyes to who Jesus really was. Their mat restrained them in such a way that they really couldn't be happy unless they were pointing their fingers at somebody else for something that they were doing wrong. Later on, the Jewish leaders, they find Jesus and they question him. And, and Jesus responds in verse 17 by saying, My father is always working. To this very day he is working. Even on the Sabbath he is working, and I too am working. Think about that for a moment. If God would stop taking care of his creation on Sunday, we would fall into full chaos, would we not? Yes, we read when God created the earth that he rested on the seventh day, but in that situation there was nothing to go wrong. There had been no sin, so he could rest. But today and every day he needs to have his hand reached out over us and upon this earth to keep it in some sort of harmony. Finally, sign number seven, back to verse 17. Jesus called God my Father. There could be no misinterpretation here. Jesus proclaims himself to be God's Son. In our catechism class, we were going and working on the Lord's Prayer, and the beginning phrase is, Our Father. When we accept Jesus Christ, our, our mat is left behind. We move on with God 
at our side through his son, Jesus Christ. But to the Jewish leaders, this man named Jesus was blasphemous. The worst of the worst. And he had to be dealt with. Do you see how easy it is to cross that line between doing God's will and having to be forced into making sure that you do nothing wrong? God's will is that we would all obey him, that we would all love him, that we would all serve him. But he also knows that that will not happen, not upon this earth. And so he provided a solution, his son, Jesus Christ. So in this miracle, we see seven signs. In the Bible, we know from our past studies that seven symbolizes completeness, wholeness, being done. So I too am finished. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for providing your son. That you loved us so very much that you were willing to ask your son Jesus to go to the cross and that he obeyed you. Lord, we don't have to carry our mats around anymore. We don't have to be looking over our shoulder wondering what others are saying. All we need to do is to take the hand of your son, Jesus Christ, and go with him. For in him, salvation is complete. We praise you for that. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of application is number 564, Rise and Be Healed. You don't know it? They do? Okay, so... She says she knows and we don't, and that probably is right. So would you play through it once, and then we'll try singing it, okay? Number 564, let's stand.
you may be seated. Not too bad for the first time, so, all right. Uh, we do have the prayer concerns that are on the pink sheet that were inserted in your Bible, or in your Bible, in your bulletin. Does anyone have anything else? All right, yes, that's awesome. We praise the Lord for that. Anything else? Well, if, oh, sorry, yeah, Roger. Okay. Okay, so we will we will pray for Jack. Yeah, it's been a, a long, long haul for him. Yeah, absolutely. Sue is slowly improving, but Vernon is not here, so um yeah. Um I talked to Vernon on Thursday and she, he said that things were slowly improving, so we praise God for that too. She is home, yes, she is home, so um I don't know if that got out or not, but yep, she is home, so we praise God for that. Anything else? If not, let's come before our Lord and let's pray. Father, we come before you, and Lord, we come with confidence because we can come with your Son, Jesus. And through him, we can call you our Father, our Dad, that we can come before you with our needs and our concerns, that you hear that you care, that you listen, and that you answer. Lord, we just thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you, Lord, for this springtime. We thank you for the, the weather to allow the farmers to begin their planting. We just pray, Lord, for continued good weather. We pray for rain as it comes, Lord. We also pray for safety. We thank you, Lord, for yesterday's women's conference, for the, the great turnout. We thank you for all those that were willing to participate and to help out. Lord, we just thank you that even through our efforts, Lord, as small as they may seem, you are blessed through us. We thank you for that. Lord, we just continue to pray for Cheryl and her family, Lord. We just pray that you will be very close to them, that you will comfort them. Lord, may they find assurance and peace in knowing that, that Al is with you that his suffering has been ended, and that he has received all the awards and rewards that you have to offer him. Lord, we pray for Ron this week as he has surgery on his vein in his neck. We just pray that all will go well and that the surgery indeed will cure the issue that he is having. We thank you that Sue has returned home. We just pray that you will continue to be with her and Vernon, Lord, that you will strengthen them. We pray that the doctors, Lord, will find answers on how it would be best to help her. Lord, we pray for Tracy and, and her family, Lord, in the midst of the, the not-so-good news this week. We would just pray, Lord, that you as the great physician would provide answers and, Lord, that there would be something that could be done for her. Just continue to be with Sherry, Lord, and, and Leanne, and also Noreen, Lord. There's been great success for Noreen. We have had a good report for Sherry, Lord. We also thank you for Leanne. We just pray that you will continue to be with all of those people and also all who are suffering with cancer. Pray for Tammy Johnson, Lord. We just pray for um, overall health, that her pain would be relieved, Lord, and that she could get around better if it be your will. Lord, again, we lift up Missy and her group as they go this um, coming in a few days, uh, Lord, we just pray that you will give them health and safety and great success. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Pray for our camps this summer, Lord. We just pray that you will be with them. We pray that there would be counselors who would be willing to help, Lord, and may the children that go to camp this year be blessed in a way that is just like no other. Lord, we just thank you for all these things. We just pray also for Jack Stickford, Lord. 
who has been in the hospital so very long. We just pray that you would help to continue to heal him. We pray that he would indeed be able to come to Des Moines, Lord, and continue his rehab and getting better there. Lord, we lift up others that need you, whose names we may not know but are going through um, various testing and different things. Lord, we just pray you'll be with them, that the doctors would find out what is going on and that there would be answers. Lord, we thank you for this church family. We thank you that you have brought us together. We thank you that you have showed us your love. And Lord, I thank you so much that these people have in turn shown that love to others. Lord, we just pray that you will help us be with our various activities, Lord. And Lord, we also pray that you will help us each and every day to do your will. We pray this all in the name of your Son who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As the deacons bring forth this morning's offering, let's stand for our doxology and offertory prayer. Father, we bring our gifts before you. May you use them mightily to the furtherance of thy kingdom. Lord, we just pray, too, that you would indeed bless the renovations that we have done to your house here in Stout. Lord, may it not be for show, but, Lord, may it be something that will be of great benefit to all who come here. We just thank you for it. We thank you for the, the generosity of these people, and we pray it all in your Son's name. Amen. Our hymn of going forth is number 328. I think we know this one a little bit better. Are you washed?
reminder, there is fellowship following this morning's worship, so join us downstairs for a time of some, some food and just some conversation. Hear now God's benediction, and now may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent, one from the other, and all God's people said, Amen. Our closing chorus, God be with you, verse 1.